So today on the Daily Drift, I'm gonna show you guys how to remove your transmission, pull your flywheel, clutch, pressure plate, the whole nine yards, and I'm gonna show you a nifty little trick to get rid of your pilot bearing without a pilot bearing puller. So stay tuned. So here's a list of all the tools you need, okay? The sledgehammer is optional, I just like having one. You're gonna need a large adjustable wrench, one that can go about that big, which is the equivalent of, that's the equivalent of one and a half inches. So make sure that it can open up that much. Just several wrenches in case, if you have an impact driver, get it. It's gonna make it so much easier, but be careful when you use it. You still need regular wrenches. A whole assortment of extensions, adapters, wobble bits, stuff that'll just make it a lot easier when you're trying to get in there and get this stuff done. Just make sure you have a lot of that on hand. Um, these here are a special kind of wrench that you're gonna need, and it's an inverted Torx. Uh, you can get these at most parts stores. This is, you're gonna need the 10, 12, and 14, uh, but this also has an eight on it, but I didn't have to use that, so make sure that you have this on hand. You do need it to separate the transmission. Then you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen, which is for removing the pressure plate. Be very careful with this one. Don't use an impact. Um, and then an assortment of impact wrench sizes, anywhere from size 10 to 18. Um, make sure you have sets of screwdrivers, especially the short one, you'll see why later, and a long one, so you need both flatheads. Those are gonna come in handy just to help you out. Set of zip ties, this is to hang the drive shaft, the pry bar. This is to help separate the transmission from the engine. Grease gun, so this is what you're gonna to use to pull the pilot bearing. And a rather large breaker bar. Make sure you have one on hand. Comes in handy for breaking those bolts loose on the transmission. And lastly, a clutch alignment tool. As you can see, this has the uh, pilot bearing on it, but you'll see how we remove that later. So just make sure you have one of these or a bolt or just something that will fit into that hole properly with sealing the way that you need it to. But these work best, that's what I found. So make sure you have something like this to use. So guys, now that you know what tools you need and you got everything set up, all we gotta do is get under there and get started. So let's move on to the first step. So the first step is these uh, little circular things here. There's two of them, one here and one here. So we wanna pop these out. These are for the uh, O2 sensors. So we'll unclip those, boom. And next, let's get the exhaust off. Next, spray some penetrating lube on these header bolts. So once you get the header bolts sprayed, then just break them loose. Be careful so you don't snap them. It should be a 15 millimeter. So we're gonna remove this bar here and it should be, it's a 16 millimeter. Right? Yep. Boom, easy as pie. Okay, we got those out. Probably hard to see, but got all those out right there. All right, these are 13s for us. I just can't wait to drive this thing. I forgot to put my safety glasses on. Yeah, just don't put your eyes on. Ready? Yep. Alright, so now we just gotta get the one in the back. Okay, so now we're just removing. There's one hanger here, so we're getting rid of that. And then the whole thing should come down. Alright. Fingers crossed. Nope, yep. Oh, yep, yep. Oh, there it goes. I'll get up towards the front. Yep. Alright, we're gonna have to kick it out to the uh, side or out the front. We can't come out the back. We'll go out the front. Let me get my arm out from under it. Alright, you good? Bad. Look at that, it's even got a big old hole in it. You see that black spot? And look, it's got the like, it's still some of the core like. Jeez, I thought I was bad, but damn. <laughs> All right, so now we're taking out the uh, transmission drain plug. It's a 17 millimeter. And then, now I can let it drain all its fluids before we take the drive shaft out. 
Yeah, because you don't want to do like what we did on the wait, wait, 7. Wait. Any guesses on what it looks like before I take it out? Because this right. car has like 270,000 on it. I'm going to go with a reddish round. Uh, a reddish round. <laughs> a a reddish brown. <laughs> I was going to say I was gonna say probably brown or dark, like dark brown. Oh my god, is there no fluid? What the fuck? Maybe that's why it went... <laughs> Holy shit! Maybe that's why it was whining so much. Dude, what the fuck? It looks like iodine. Look at my hand. Like, why it's like is it super that dark. color? I was right about the color. It's reddish brown. But, uh... Um, Dude, there's no fluid in there. That's not good. I wonder how long it was Ooh. running like that. Alright, well... That's something. So take a look at all the gunk that was inside this damn thing. I'm gonna take a magnet it's insane. To see. Well, I mean, that it's probably out. like material and stuff, but look at that. Oh, dude. Look at all that crap. Uh, that looks like... Clutch material? That might be part of the in internal clutches on the uh, for the gears and shit. I mean, that's probably from not having any fluid. Damn, dude. This is why oh, you man. always check your cars bef before you go driving them when you buy a used one. You never know what you're going to get, and that was really bad. Next step, we're going to take this little uh, heat shield here. We're just going to take this heat shield. Should be a bunch of little bolts like this. Pop it out and drop it down so we can get to the drive shaft. Got this sucker out. I'm just going to put my bolts right next to it so it's easy to keep track of. So now it's a two-piece drive shaft, so what are we trying to do? The front part where there's a rubber bushing. I think that's going to be our only option. Yeah, we're going to have to get this off next, but in order to get this off, we may have to lower this. But so, if we do that, then we got to support this with a jack. And also we'll be right back. Off. we got like a spooter living in a spooter's thing. Right in there. I don't know what the we fuck. Don't, we don't know if he's alive or dead. Oh, fuck. Is he in here? Where'd he go? He fell. Oh, shit. I think he's in here. I don't like spiders. I'm going to find out. Oh, let's go see. In here. Look, he I, see little, I see little air bubbles coming up over here. Oh, he fell over in here. There he is. That's a big oh. ass scooter. Look at him. Is he alive? Or is he dead? He's alive. He's moving. Oh my god, it is alive. Well, he's Dude. dying now. Yeah, look at the fuck. What the hell? Can you see that? Dude, that might be a brown recluse. Look at the size of it. It's oh, a good size. Bit my ring. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's look an angry scooter. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to lower this cross member slightly. We have a jack stand set up to catch the transmission. So it's just going to slowly come down so we can get that bracket out of the way and then do the drive shaft. Yep. Wow. Oh, I'm going to put the speed up. It's on the lowest speed right now. I, and I would leave two of them, like leave, like leave one in on each side so you can yeah. slowly drop it down. You know what I mean? So, like, do it very slowly on these next ones. Because if you just drop it, it's going to fall out. And it's going to fall onto the jack. You know what I'm saying? There you go. See how it's slowly doing it? Now do it slowly on the other side. Uh, yeah, that's got... There's two bolts you got to get out. Uh -oh. The trans mounts. We're probably going to want to replace those, to be honest. Those look pretty worn. Just getting these out. Now it should come loose. Okay, so the transmission is now officially floating in midair somehow. And then now we gotta do this. Make sure you pay attention because as you can tell, only one, two, and three are actually on the drive shaft. These other ones are just holding the little donut to the transmission. So those three are what we need to use. So an 18 on this side and 18 on this side. Yep. It's not even moving. PB. Yeah, let's spray it. We're gonna ah. spray it with some PB. Got it. Okay, so next what we gotta do is take a big old adjusty wrench and loosen this puppy up. That used to be lube, I think. Yeah, there's all kinds of shit that popped out of this. So in there, yeah, it's you like... can probably see we got the nut off, but it's just like nasty. So we're gonna spray some PB blaster in there, because once we get that off, we gotta slide the uh, drive shaft that way. So, oh, yep. We'll just spray it in there and let it sit. So next, you just want to take these bolts out for the carrier bearing, and this should allow you to drop this down, but don't let it fall out. So guys, you may have to remove this bracket like I did. I just basically loosened it. There's four bolts. It's a 13, 
and I just loosened it enough to where I could swing one side out so I could move the drive shaft and get this thing to come loose because it was just not working otherwise. So you may have to do that. So now I'm gonna just hang this up on the side so that way it's out of the way. Okay, so I used some nifty little zip ties. Uh, there's a little body hole on this side of the uh, thing that it manages to fit through. And I just ran it through the top. You can probably see. I just ran it through that top hole through the bottom hole and then that basically holds the drive shaft up in place. Uh, so it's out of the way but not separated. So it should be good now. So next we gotta take the shifter linkage out. Which is up under here. That shifter bar right there, that's the next thing that we gotta pull out. Okay, so this little shifter bar sits under there kind of like this. And there will be two little clips on each end. Um, and you just gotta pop those clips and then slide this sucker off. It's pretty straightforward. Um, mine didn't have the clips in it. It was literally just hanging there. So, yeah. Okay, so this next part... What we need to do is slightly lower this transmission. But the key is, if this wasn't like this, I wouldn't be able to reach up here and get to this linkage. So hopefully now we should be in a good spot. Okay, so you can see here, this is the pin. Normally there'd be a shifter arm here, but I'm gonna show you out here what it looks like. So this, you can't see under the car. You gotta come up from below. What I did is I took one of these little screwdrivers and I wedged it in between here as best I could. And then I took another screwdriver and from the bottom side, got it up under there and then wedged it until I could get it up under this screwdriver to then pop it and it would just, you just have to mess with it, mess with it until eventually it would pop out. And then that's how you'd get that off. So yeah, it's a pain in the ass, but just be prepared. Use a little baby screwdriver and a long screwdriver and you should be able to get it. Okay hey guys, so the next thing we gotta do is take out the slave cylinder. It's two bolts, 13 millimeter. Gonna need some extensions and your trusty little wobble bit. And that should do it. Got it out. So I just put the nuts back on the hole so that way it doesn't go missing. So now I just need to go and get a tool to get these nuts off the bell housing and then we should be good. All right guys, so I'm back, it's a, it's a different day. Uh, I had to stop that day, I got as much done as I could but it got really late and it was just, it was just not happening. And you know like sometimes when you're working on something, you just gotta walk away from it sometimes and then you can come back with a clear head. So, so we're gonna continue where we were, we're gonna finish getting this transmission pulled out um, and then we'll see what we gotta do from there. So guys, I wanna show you guys something and this is exactly why you always put jack stands and always support everything. So I left this thing in here from like two nights ago. Uh, so let me show you. So if you look right there, the jack fell down and is no longer even supporting the transmission, but because I put that there, it's perfectly fine. So yeah guys, make sure to use your jack stands. They come in very handy. Okay guys, so you might have a hard time seeing this, but it's really hard because some of these bolts are like really far back there. So I'm just gonna try to get as many of these things out as I can and just do what I can. So yeah, these things are really tucked up in here like, holy crap. I'm making sure that I got this thing on here all the way because if this thing's not on here all the way, ooh, that's not good. We don't wanna strip nothing. Here we go. There it goes. Holy cow, that thing was on there. Whew. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these bolts off and then I'll be right back. I just love doing this. Uh, so here's a little trick, just want you to know what I had to do to get to these last two bolts that are up on the very top is I lowered the transmission slightly so I can get my arm up there and kind of feel around and I also removed the uh, sound deadening crap be careful because that stuff has like all kinds of shit. I'm pretty sure it's asbestos. Pretty sure I'm gonna get cancer from this, but you know, whatever. We're gonna get cancer from everything. So uh, basically, yeah, so we're gonna go, I can now reach under there and get that bolt. So I'm gonna go and zip those top ones off. So let's do it. Oh, there's a spider. Hello, Spooter. How you doing today? Please don't jump on my face. That would not be cool. Are we bros, spider? Are we gonna be bros today? 
Do me a favor and not, don't jump on my face. That'd be that'd be that would be just outstanding. I would love that so much if you would just not jump onto my face. Thank you. Thank you, Spooter. You're the best. I need a wobble. I need a wobble. See if we can get it with this big ass thing. Okay guys, here we go. Ooh. Okay, I think I got it. Oh. Yep, okay. Got it. Okay guys, there's a little tiny bolt right there on the back side. Don't forget that bolt, it's 10 millimeters. On the side of the transmission, next to the sticker, there's a uh, switch here you gotta unclip, and that's for your reverse light, so make sure you unclip that before you pull the transmission. Okay guys, so you'll see here, I've got this whole thing uh, supported. All the bolts are out, so it's, it's completely free, but it's still attached, so what I need to do is try to get this thing to slide this, go this way, um, but without putting any stress on the input shaft, because we don't wanna blow any blow anything up on that end. Um, so I'm gonna like push up and wiggle. Now what I'm gonna do, I would not suggest anybody try, unless if you feel comfortable with this, is I'm gonna get under it and support it. Yeah, it's risky, but I feel like I, I'll be okay because it's not that big of a transmission, but I don't, don't do this. Uh, the the best, best way to do it is obviously A, do it on a lift and B, use your jacks. But right now the jacks are in the way I don't really see another way that I can do this carefully, so just watch and hopefully I don't uh, hurt myself. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, I hope this works. Ow! God, there's like not enough room for this. Oh, there we go. Get it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, it's free. It's free. So now, now's the hard part. Fuck. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Fuck, that's heavy. <sighs> Motherfucker. Oh, wouldn't you know it? <sighs> Holy shit. Oh my god, that was a bitch. <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna get this thing out from under here. Now I just gotta drag this puppy out of here. Just gotta have something to slide this bitch on. There we go. <laughs> now we pull. That's how we do it. Oh, stuck on something. Okay. Oh, shit. Look, it's like a damn puzzle. Here we go. Ha! Got it. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Okay, so if you're looking here, these are the different bolts that uh, go into the back of your transmission. You're gonna have these two long bolts. And these go up, I'll show you where these go. You're gonna have these two, so a total of four. These are your 14s. These are your two starter bolts, they're 12s. And then three of these little 10s, they're the inverted Torx bit. And then this one little piece, which is a, uh, it's basically just a, uh, a little uh, piece that holds that little bell housing on there. It's only, it's a 10 mil, so that's all that is. Um, but these are the pieces that keep the transmission connected to the engine. So now I'll show you where they go on the transmission. So first we're going to do the 14s that are really long. One of them goes through in this spot right there. And the other one goes right there. We'll take the short 14s. So your short 14s go up on the very top. These are those ones that are a pain in the butt to get to. You need a wobble joint to get these ones off. Now I'll show you the starter bolts. These go up here. You're gonna have one that's connected right here. Boom. And then one that's right on the other side of this hump. Right down there. So that's the 12s. These last three are your 10s. These ones are very easy. 
Uh, they're pretty visible, they're on the bottom. Okay, so here's the order. So you got tiny 10 mil, tiny 10, tiny 10, long 14. This is the 10 millimeter uh, little bolt that holds that plate on. Short 14, short 14, 12, 12, those are your starter bolts. Long 14, and you're back to your short 10, and that's it. Well guys, we got it out. Freaking excited to have this thing done. Like, I mean, it's not done, but you know, we got this bitch out, so that's freaking awesome. So the next step, I gotta get this thing cleaned up, because as you can see in there, it is terrible. I think that's a combination of the input shaft seal, the rear main seal, and maybe some of the fluid leaking out of the dual mass flywheel, because they've got some weird, like, uh, it's a weird setup. We're gonna be switching to a single, so we'll have a different video for that. But, yo, that is disgusting. Like, look, there's a lot of play in this thing, too. That throw out bearing, throw out bearing wasn't too bad, but it wasn't all that great either. But yeah. So yeah, so next up, uh, I'm gonna get the clutch and the flywheel off, so that way we don't have to mess with that and I can get an idea of what the rear main looks like in the, yeah, so let's get to it. Okay guys, so now we're gonna remove these bolts here. Uh, it's a six millimeter uh, Allen thing, so we'll do that real quick. Uh-oh. That's not good. Oh boy. I think I just fucked it up. Okay guys, so I screwed up and used an impact and I really shouldn't have. I knew it when I was doing it, but whatever. So now I gotta cut this bolt off, so that's what I'm gonna do. The joys of half-assing shit. Well, it's getting there slowly but surely, but this is a pain in the ass. It wouldn't be the daily drift if we didn't have at least one thing screw up. Uh. We'll see if I can pry this sucker off. Sorry guys, my camera died, but you could see I had to cut a massive ass chunk out of this thing to get this thing off. Uh, but I was able to pry it off. You can see it's all burned up and crap, so it, it was it was definitely toast. So good deal. You can probably see here where this is left on there, but I need to get a socket for that. Alright guys, so this is the flywheel. It's massive. It looks like this is a 19 millimeter for these bolts. I'm using an impact, but be careful, don't zip them all the way off because this thing is heavy as shit. So you don't want <clears throat> Yeah, got all kinds of shit in my mouth. You don't want this thing falling because it's like 40 pounds. So just get it loose and keep at least like one in there so you can get your hands on it and support it on the way down so you don't drop it. Okay, this one we gotta be careful. It's the last one. So I need to get my hand on this thing. Okay. Okay, got him. Be careful because this thing is heavy. All right, got it. So that's that, so it's out. This part of the rear main seal looks okay, but down here looks like it's leaking a little bit. So we'll have to fix that. Um, see if we can figure out what that is later, but we'll do that in a different video. Okay guys, so if you don't have a pilot bearing puller, get yourself a grease gun and uh, Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it inside there and fill it up with grease. And you wanna go, 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 go. Till it starts coming out. Now that it's starting to come out. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this clutch alignment tool. Um, basically, cause it's got a nice end that's gonna fit in there. We're gonna pop it in there and you'll see it's not gonna wanna go all the way. So we're gonna hit it with a hammer and this should help get it coming out. And then we gotta add a little bit more grease now. Okay, pop this sucker in there. Uh, this is hard when you can't swing a hammer. It's almost out. You can see it's almost there. Just put a little bit more, uh, a little bit more grease. 
got it. Look at that. <laughs> See, guys? Told you it worked. It's just a lot of work to get out, but this is how you do it if you don't have a, a pilot bearing puller. So, nice tip for you. Okay guys, so here we have everything all kind of laid out. You can see that there's definitely some burning and some warpage on this pressure plate. Um, so it wasn't wearing very evenly, but 270,000 miles, that's not bad. Uh, okay, over here. So this is the dual mass flywheel. And obviously there's that, that's not normally there. But you can see here where it's just burned and I can feel it's just warped and it's just not, it's not sitting on there like it should. It's just not good. Um, and you can see it was also leaking out of here, and I think that might be what some of that fluid was that's inside the uh, bell housing and the transmission over there. Um, so yeah, so that's that's what that is. If you're not sure what what I mean when I say dual mass, I mean there's literally two masses, and there's springs inside of there that allow this thing to basically slip both directions. It just makes for a smoother engagement and for that luxury feel, if you know what I mean. So here's an example of what I mean by, see how it's got that play? You can move it slightly, there's springs in there. If this was under a tension, I could, I could move it even further, but this is just free play. And that right there, that little bit is what uh, gives it the smoothness when it's going down there. But for what we're trying to do, we don't really want that. We want it to be direct, and that way we know exactly what it's doing. And now for the clutch. Okay, so upon inspection, this clutch is actually pretty worn. Um, you can see where it's like cracking and stuff. Um, let's see if I can show you the other side. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not terrible. It wasn't completely done, but it was on the way out. So it's good that we're changing this. So yeah. All right, guys. So I got this thing out finally. We got the flywheel out. We got the pressure plate and the clutch. We got the transmission done. Even showed you a little trick for how to get rid of the pilot bearing using just grease. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's a lot of work. This took me about two days broken up, a few hours each time. Um, so it's not too bad, but it is a pain in the ass if you're doing it yourself and if you're doing it with just jack stands. It's, it's kind of a pain, not gonna lie. So uh, make sure you got the right tools and uh, make sure you got all your parts ready to go so you can get it back on so you're not waiting like I am. Uh, I got a lot of parts on the way, but uh, I'm going to get those and we'll get those in and hopefully we'll get this finished up later this week um, and hopefully we'll get this thing back on the road soon. I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, so if you guys like this video, smash that like. If you didn't, dislike it. Either way, just lets me know what you guys like and what you don't. And uh, if you guys haven't already, consider subscribing because we got a lot more planned for this car and we'll see y'all in the next one.